You know, I don't think any one of us had any notion that Brother Aaron had any difficulty in speaking the things which he saw and heard today. You know, they say in order to get water, you got to have water. Brother Aaron, your well sprang up, and boy, my well is springing up too, and I, I'm thankful for that. The exhortation is pretty obvious because it is in the text. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. So let me append an exhortation to that. There is a requirement in having the boldness that is necessary to come, and you find that up in the 14th verse, and it is in this, seeing that we have a great high priest. It is actually our perception of Christ that gives us the necessary boldness to come to the throne of grace. We have access with confidence by the faith of Christ Jesus, the Apostle Paul said through the Spirit, and it is only by Christ Jesus. In the 14th and the 15th verse, he says more about Jesus than he says about you. Because you can't obtain boldness by having you in your heart and mind predominantly in order to come to God. You, that will never work. There were two men that prayed unto God. The Pharisee had a strong awareness of the righteousness of God and beat his breast and he wouldn't even look up to heaven. I mean the, the publican. Wouldn't even look up to heaven. Of course, he went away justified because he got hard. The, the Pharisee, though, was full of himself. And he didn't get heard, right? It is seeing Christ himself and what he has done that gives us the necessary boldness to come to God. And so that's really what I want to look at here for just a moment is this 14th and 15th verse. Seeing then, do not assume that you see. Brother Aaron said, let's not be assuming. If there's anything you want to be assuming about, it is not about your knowledge of Christ Jesus. Jesus is a common household word in the professed church, but he is very little known in it. Do not assume that you see him. Labor to see him and continually to see him. And so let's do that. Seeing what about Jesus? Seeing that we have a great high priest. Caiaphas was a high priest, but he wasn't a great high priest. In fact, Caiaphas was the high priest in the time that Jesus walked the earth, and yet the people that he was mediating for were the ones that did not know that Jesus was the Lord of glory and sought to kill him. The people to whom Jesus mediates for know God and are known of him. He makes intercession for them. They're no longer an enmity with God. He truly does bring us to God. And by his own blood, he has brought us nigh to God. And he is ultimately going to bring us to God in the fullness of his presence. And thus is he a great high priest. More than that, he says, this is the high priest that is passed into heavens. The other high priest ministered in a tabernacle made with hands, but not the Son of God. See, we're coming to God. We're coming to a throne that's not on earth, a throne that's in heaven. And if we are going to come through the mediatorship of Christ, he has got to be where the throne is, right? He has passed into the heavens. In fact, the scripture says that he obtained eternal redemption in those places. And thus can we come all the way to God. You know, a man who's mediating can only bring you as far as he himself is in his nearness to God. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. He's passed into the heavens. And he is Jesus, the Son of God. Think of that aspect of Jesus. Before we make him too much of a man, realize that he is, in fact, the Son of God. There is none of the sons of Adam who can make intercession before God because they were all conceived in sin. This man was not conceived in sin. He's the Son of God. And think of this aspect of that. He is the son of God in whom God was well pleased. God's had other children, but they've not pleased him well, not like the son of God. The son of God is the one who has done all things well, and he always does those things that please the father, and the father has not left him. So when you come to the father, come through the one who has, who, of whom God has placed his seal of approval on. He's the son of God. And think of it this way, in verse 15, we've not 
we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feeling of our infirmities. He is the Son of God, and yet he is, in fact, a man. He is that. You do not come to, to God through the mediatorship of an angel. Think of that. Oh, how scared we would be if we came that way. An angel doesn't know what it's like to be weak or to have some kind of infirmity. They don't know what it's like to be unable. See, they don't have, they don't have those kind of things. See? Jesus knows what it is to be weak, to have weakness. He knows those things, see? Those things that are necessary for us to have someone in heaven who can be touched with an infirm condition. Jesus has those. And thus, can we come to God knowing that we have a sympathizer in heaven, see, who can make intercession for us? See, I'm showing you we come by seeing Christ. It's what you see in Christ that gives you the necessary boldness to come. We have all through Scripture godly men who have shown you the advantage of coming by seeing. As long as Peter was seeing Jesus, he was walking on water. As long as David knew that God, the battle belonged to the Lord, he could charge the field against Goliath and be victorious without being scared. As long as Moses could see him that was invisible, he could deny Egypt. Right? This is how critical seeing is. And so let's be encouraged with this exhortation to labor to see because when you can see Christ with clarity you'll have the boldness to come so that's my exhortation to you this morning I open it up for you brother